What's up, Lou? Hey, Lou. What's going on? Yeah, today's going to be our witchy day. Even though it's not October, it's going to be our witchy day because we have Gina Marinelli from La Strega. And La Strega means the witch. And she's going to explain to you why, um, why witches, why covens, why that whole thing, what it all means, really. But before we have Gina, we're going to go ahead and start with what we've been doing lately, which is our chef snacks and pandemic provisions. Pandemic provisions. Pandemic provisions. Mm -hmm. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and start. I am in Wisconsin right now because I had to come over here for family matters. And because I'm in Wisconsin, um, I'm having a lot of brats. I'm having beer and brats. Yeah. And um, the most famous sausage, the most famous brat in the world is the Johnsonville bratwurst. This one's my favorite, Mm -hmm. jalapeno cheddar, because I like it spicy. And in Wisconsin, you always eat this with uh, sauerkraut, because a lot of people are of German origin in Wisconsin. Interesting. Um, but what's interesting about this brand, Johnsonville particularly, I actually had thought it was going to be Germany, you know, but the family that makes this, which by the way, it's still privately owned, which is interesting. Um, the family recipe comes from 19th century Austria. Hmm. So it's an Austrian recipe. I mean, close by, obviously, to Germany, but it's a different country than I thought it was going to be. It's the number one brand of sausage in America available in almost 50 countries. So, Johnsonville brats. Wow. And by the way, I don't know if you've noticed this, but it's impossible to get them nowadays. Like, it's really hard to get bratwurst almost anywhere right now. I haven't one noticed weird, weird pandemic things, you know, certain things are missing, and, and this has been one of them. In fact, to the point where Chrissy Teigen was actually on her Twitter account, which has millions and millions of followers, asking if somebody could get her some sausages, and in return, she was going to, like, sign a bunch of stuff for them. Wow. That's, that's <laughs> crazy. I will so definitely because be on the lookout. I have brats. You have something similar, but not the same. Because the Germans are like, you know, big sausage making people. We're going to focus um, the American hot dog. Ha ha! Dogs! The American hot dog. I mean, everybody loves hot dogs, but yes. the fun and interesting fact is Americans consume 20 billion hot dogs per year. And that ah. puts us at about like 75 hot dogs per person. Like, Holy I'd, crap! Yeah, dude. I mean, do you really eat 75 hot dogs per year? I probably eat like maybe three. I mean, I probably eat like maybe 20 or something, but I think where that comes from is places like this. Yeah, 75 hot dogs, is that even possible in a 365 day? So for most people here in the Midwest, not just Wisconsin, uh, they can clean these. Like meaning they could, one guy could clean up a whole package of this. When yeah. they eat hot dogs here, or I should say brats, to be honest, um, they eat three, four at a time. So at three, four at a time and having it at least like weekly, that's definitely more than 50. So they probably make up for the lack of hot dogs and sausages and brats that we eat. So <laughs> so the lack of hot dogs, huh? Yeah. Anyway. So you like hot dogs more than brats? Uh, well, I think the brats are more flavorful. Mm. than hot dogs but hot dogs do really hit the spot so another fun fact another fun fact um they were called dachshund sausages that's what what, you know exactly (laughs) so the illustration back in the day from like this vendor at a polo match was like a dachshund in a bun so that's where the term hot dog was actually coined wow okay yeah 
Well, good to know that's completely random and cool. I love that. Uh, I love hot dogs at a baseball game. Mm -hmm. um, I like those really long hot dogs that you can get at like, the stadium. Yeah. yeah, or you can get them at a lot of stadiums. I think I had it in Boston at Fenway Park. It's like a foot long or more and just filled with like peppers and onions. And wait, what do you, this is a very big thing of contention with hot dogs and bratwurst. What do you put on yours? Exactly. Like, regularly. So so um, here, here's here's my question to you. What is your favorite hot dog topping? So in parts of this area, like in the Midwest, they frown upon ketchup. Okay. So a Chicago dog is just mustard and pickles and onions and things like that. But don't dare put ketchup on it in Chicago. Right. Sure. Um, which is a couple hours from here. I like everything. So I'm like an everything bagel kind of everything hot dog kind of person. You know what I mean? Right. So put all that shit on for me. Like on a bagel, put on the capers and the salmon. And, uh, on ketchup, same thing. I mean on ketchup. On hot dog, same thing. And brats. Ketchup, mustard, onions, sauerkraut. I even go relish. I'll put anything on that hot dog. All right. Mayo. Uh, oh, God. So not that. Not that. <laughs> no, not mayo. <laughs> no. But, you know, I like making like a little Thousand Island sauce. The secret. Okay. Thousand Island sauce. But mustard is the most popular hot dog condiment ketchup okay. being like the close second and in honor of us being from las vegas there are some bad ass hot dog places there yes i know you like dirt dogs dirt um, dog. i like bulldogies i mean mm -hmm. there are a ton of great hot dog places that are the new american right true that um uh case in point the elote dog from um Ooh. dirt dog mm -hmm. i mean whoa what's more to ask for it's like the mexican hot dog pair that would like a little Corona <laughs> or Modelo. Oh, ooh, super yeah. good. Yeah, good. I can totally. Beer is like the best thing with hot dogs. I feel like beer makes hot dogs better and hot dogs make beer better. And I always boil brats in beer before I actually grill them. So that's like a it's Wisconsin good. Midwestern thing, you know? So let's try to boil some hot dogs in beer before grilling them. <laughs> yes, it, it makes it Extra more delicious. Flavor. And then yeah. drink a beer with it as well. So. All right, let us introduce Gina Marinelli from La Strega. Uh, so excited. We've got Gina Marinelli from La Strega today as our guest, chef and managing partner out in Summerlin, Las Vegas. Gina, first, how's it going? You know, for everything that's happening right now, it's, it's going. You know, we're, <laughs> we're doing a great curbside program. We're trying to stay really invested in the restaurant, stay invested in our guests. Uh, try some new food out and really just build off this business that we've all had to turn to right now. So we're staying creative. We're staying on top of it. So it's just, I'm grateful that I can still be in the kitchen working right now with my staff. So we're having fun. Yeah. You launched a curbside pickup early last month, recently. Mm -hmm. uh, what does your timeline look like for dining in? Because we're already getting people asking. They love La Strega, especially a bunch of locals, a bunch of chefs. Mm -hmm. um, are you talking about it yet? Are you kind of feeling it out, trying to figure out how you're going to make it work? You know, we're still kind of in, you know, the infancy of it. You know, we want to develop a great, we have great SOPs that we've been working on. You know, and I think the thing is just to see how people react to restaurants reopening. You know, and we have to take care of so many different measures right now that we've already had in place, but it's super heightened. So we're just playing it safe right now, seeing what's happening. No date yet. So we're just trying to keep the curbside program going. And we want everybody to come back and feel good and feel safe, yeah. you know, and that's what we're really trying to just build inside of this right now. You know, so yeah. so many questions and so many things. So do you wear a mask? Do we take the temperatures? Do we do all of these things? And I think just watching these other restaurants kind of go through it, you know, take our time, go slow. It took a while to open Las Strega, so it might take a little while to reopen as well, so. Totally makes sense, very smart. Mm -hmm. uh, we've seen quite a bit of positive actually out of this pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, on your end, do you see some silver linings, like maybe some new discoveries, some extra R&D time, uh, time to relax, like something that's kind of positive that you've gotten out of this crazy experience? You know, it's funny when, when it first started, I thought I was going to get like a little time off. <laughs> you know, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to learn Italian or I'm going to do a puzzle or whatever. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we just really took this time to dive in, get back into the restaurant and we knew it was going to go to, to go food and a lot of curbside. So how do you take curbside? I don't even want to say elevate it, but just make it so when people get it home, it's almost the same 
experience. Yeah, yeah. Right. and that's part of it's all these little touches that we've been trying to do, how we can still connect with people. One new thing we do, we do QR codes with playlists. So you can mm -hmm. go home and put music on that kind of Ooh, vibe. That is cool. Yeah, the vibe of La Strega. You know, as Love it. We just started The Secret Burger. We're doing a lot of tutorials. So it's a really new way of thinking, you know, and so that's kind of the positive side. So we're always going to have this program going forward. You know, yeah. right? we've always done kind of like to go, but now we were able to have the time to really work on it. Get the yes. right get the right look of things. So it's been fun. You know, we didn't want to just throw stuff together in a box and send it home. We want to do the fun, cool dishes that we do at Australia at home as well. So right. that's, that's kind of the time. That's been my silver lining. You know, I'm not working till midnight. That's another silver lining. So <laughs> I'm so of course. you know, but I just think it's been a good time to kind of reconnect, refocus, and you know, I don't know, we never took it for granted, but really appreciate what we do every day. You know, that's, that's true. That is very true. Uh, if anything, this pandemic actually showed us to like really slow down and pay attention. Mm -hmm. It's not, we're not on that wheel anymore. We're no. actually reinventing what yeah. it's like. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, you've described La Strega as a female driven restaurant. I mean, there's some obvious reasons for that. I mean, obviously you're at the helm, which unfortunately is not that common anywhere, let alone Las Vegas, yeah. uh, managing partner and chef. Mm -hmm. And um, and then you've got this amazing uh, female GM as well. Yep. Love her. Uh, and, you know, I look behind you and you've got this gorgeous feminine setting, feminine decor. What does that mean to you to bring that femaleness to your restaurant and what you do? You know, I think the, the first thing was everybody thinks of Italian food. It's very dark. It's very heavy. It's very masculine. So for us to build a restaurant that's kind of when I see Italy, like I think of Sophia Loren, like I think of these beautiful bright Ooh. So, you know, it just kind of has that romantic side yeah. to it. But for us to be in the forefront, it's, it's so empowering, you know, mm -hmm. and to watch us grow as individuals. You know, I hate people like, oh, female chef, female chef, but now I've just learned to embrace it, you know? Yeah. And we have such beautifully talented women in this building. And we have the men that work here embrace us growing and changing and it's just, we're all individuals here. Kind of, we're almost gender, we're gender blind, yeah. you know? So that's kind yeah. of been the most positive thing. And I love watching, you know, younger women in their early 20s come in and just really blossom, yeah. you know? And it's, it's kind of like creating a safe place for that, you oh, know? I love that. And, yeah. and you feel like that. Like, unfortunately, if we have a bad day, we're psychotic or irrational or this, but it's okay to have a bad day here. It doesn't matter if yeah. you're, you know, a male or a female. Everybody has a bad yeah. day. So, yeah, That's kind of on that uh, topic, if it doesn't matter whether you're a female or male, I totally did a deep dive on your, uh, your Instagram account. So if you see a bunch of likes there, I promise I'm not a crazy, creepy stalker. I'm just like, a, looking for information all stalker. I get it all the time. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, we noticed one of your, your male, I believe he was a cook, uh, mm -hmm. in a witch's hat. Oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we know that La Strega means the witch. Correct. And uh, we've also heard you refer to your team sometimes as your coven. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so seriously, what's up with all this like bruja witchiness going on there? So it's funny, like in Italy, witches have a completely different connotation than they do here with us. They're actually more nurturers and providers and caretakers. And, and you know, it's just really when you cook, you're very creating something. And that's what the witches used to do. So wow. I love that. And like, like, I mean, it's so hokey to be like my big pot. I make this beautiful you know, <laughs> broth, but it's right. stirring and stirring. <laughs> <laughs> At least I have a good nose. Right. Um, <laughs> but it's just that whole feeling of like the witches took care of the neighborhood, the uh. witches were like the grandmothers and all that stuff. So that's kind of how we like to look at it. We, we cook for our guests. We take care of them bring them in our home and that's really what La Strega means that's the witch hmm. interesting awesome. interesting take right yeah like yeah. over here over here witches were burned at the stake yes <laughs> well, different story. must be good yeah maybe <laughs> yeah. must be good to be Italian I know <laughs> so Gina we very much believe in chefs as storytellers uh -huh. uh, what item on your menu really kind of is a great you know tells your story best Oh, it's hard because there's quite a few. Yeah. Or items, that's fine. Yeah. I'll do a couple. Uh, one for me, like the, the simplistic one is the anchovy crostini. 
Um, for me, I just think everybody always is kind of like, oh, anchovies, you know, when we were making the menu, we wanted to figure out a way to make people fall in love with something that they usually despised. So mm -hmm. when we were in like the Amalfi Coast, we were in Sorrento, you know, we we're just walking by and you would see these beautiful anchovies, you know, and it was just like yes. that bite and it would just take you right to the ocean, right to the sea. Yeah. So we did this dish where we did just great little crostini, preserved orange, really to like cut through it, a little bit of shallot and just that little leaf of oregano that like anytime I just smell oregano taste, it's just like, boom, like it just takes you home. So right. Yes. A little bite just creates that imagery in your mind. You know, you can see the coast, you can smell the water, you can taste mm -hmm. citrus. And that's just one of those things like just transports you. you yes. Know, magical. Another one for me is definitely the whole fish. Same okay. thing, you know, Italian food, the best way to do it is get great ingredients and respect them and mm -hmm. treat them with love. So we get these beautiful fish in and we just clean them. We use the best olive oil, we get great capers, we get great lemons, and we make a great sauce for it. And you just cook it nice and slow, stuff it with fresh herbs. And again, it's that simplicity and it just, it warms your heart, you know? Mm -hmm. You don't need anything else. You have this fish and a great glass of wine and you're there. And that's really what our food is. That's why it's like music. You hear a song and it takes you somewhere. Same with like all the scents of La Strega, all the flavors, all the things. And I just think the biggest compliment we've ever gotten is that your food takes me back somewhere. Mm -hmm. you know, I think that's when people say that to me, that warms my heart. Yeah. You know, so we're very coastal here. Our linguine and clams, same thing. You know, in Southern Italy, they cook the pasta in the sauce. That's why we use the dry yes. pasta. And we do mm -hmm. the lemons. We do it for 35 days. And it's just beautiful clams. They open up, the brininess comes out. We use a little bit of clam juice and this great dried pasta, and it just all kind of comes together in this one plate. And again, it's just four or five ingredients in one thing. That's kind of our big MO here is just let these few things sing together. And, you know, it always takes me somewhere back in Italy. All this food does. You know I mean? Mm -hmm. food, food drives everything there. You know, it brings families yes. together. It's how you celebrate. It does everything. And they just use what's locally sourced to them. And it's just, it's beautiful. I can, I can see the nets. I can hear the water. I can feel it. And that's what brings me here every day. That's what makes us want to cook for everybody every day, to get that feeling of that coastal Italian in the middle of the desert. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I, I totally understand that because after my trip to Italy, um, I just, every time I smelled anything that was like zesty, lemony, I always thought of Sorrento or being, you know, on the Amalfi Coast, uh, Ravello and Positano, that whole area where everything is lemon this and lemon that and lemons on the wall and lemons coming from the trees and by the bus stop and everywhere. That's oh, all yeah. I could think of. It is. And, and one more dish because this is kind of cool. So um, the, Genovese, the Genovese we do, we were at Cinque Terre during Thanksgiving, my fiance and I. And ah. we ended up going on this little hike and we met this couple from Brazil. And you know, you know, when you're traveling, you're like a different person. You're like talking. Totally. To <laughs> reinvent yourself, <laughs> eat, pray, love every day. And yeah, exactly. So we're out there. We meet this couple. We spend the whole day with them. Okay. So it's Thanksgiving. We're like, let's go to dinner together. And we went, and that's the first time I had Genovese in Chico Terre. And it, I was like, it has to go on my menu. Like this mm -hmm. has to be a part of it. Cause I will never forget Thanksgiving. No Turkey, you know, yeah. <laughs> But sharing it with a couple that I just met, but I felt like I knew my whole life. And we took that dish, you know, we worked on it, you know, a few months and just really perfected it. And every time I see it, I still think, oh, turkey day. You know, I it just love feels that. good, you know? Yeah. Let's, That's a great let's story. Yeah. yeah. Let's talk a little bit more about your Italian travels because, right. you know, it's, it's so obvious, the influences on your menu and your whole environment there that you have at La Strega. It really is like being transported when you are there. It's not like you're in someone. It feels like you're in like a little cute, you know, place in Italy that you can just duck into off a of cobble street. Yep. Uh, did going there and cooking there kind of, I guess, change your whole course of your career and the way that you cook and the way that you see food? Oh, 100%. I, I was just, I was a line cook still for Michael Mina and I was like, forget it. I quit my job and I spent six weeks over in Europe and I was like, you know, you have to, when you're a cook, a young cook, you know, you work in so many different cuisines and you got to find that one cuisine that really kind of grabs at you. And I went to Europe and I just, the time I spent in Italy, it just wrapped its arms around me and just like completely pulled me in. And right. I was like, that's the food I want to learn. That's the food I want to grow into, you know, and 
it's it's awesome. Like making pastas, doing bread, doing pizzas, all these things, you just keep growing and growing. And it's just love at first sight. And so you knew that when you were gonna do your own restaurant, that's oh, what yeah. you were gonna do? I came back and that's when I started working with uh, Scott. And really, I just love Scott's take on Italian food. You know, it's very soulful. It's, it's very sexy. It's, you know, it's romantic. And, you know, he would teach me how to, you know, use techniques in Rome, but apply it to ingredients in Sicily. And I just really engulfed myself with that, just as much knowledge. And every time I was able to take a trip, I was going back to Italy just to wow. see it and feel it. And I really wanted it to come off as honest in the restaurant. All right. Yeah. So switching gears a little bit. Yep. Because mm -hmm. I'm a huge football fan. Let's do it. Let's, okay. <laughs> and, okay. And, I, and I found out you are too, because of my deep dive, yes. um, my football stocking. Uh -huh. So we know that your dad is yep. Rod Marinelli, yep. who was long time at the Dallas Cowboys. Yep. So is that what first made you a Cowboys fan? Yes. So I, I, everyone's like, who's your team? I'm like, Rod's team. You know, because we found <laughs> so much. So he was he was with the Buccaneers, the Lions, the Bears, yes. the Cowboys, and now you know he's a Raider. So we've just kind of gone around with him, and everybody's like, "Oh, you know, you're a bandwagon." It's it's so different being on the you know the inside of the team. Yeah. You know, you gotta you gotta cheer for your dad. You know, sure. that's what you gotta go for. So that was my next question because okay. <laughs> you totally led into it because I'm like a diehard. You know, I'm from San Francisco, so diehard mm -hmm. 49ers fan. Okay. There was like zero snowballs chance in hell that I'm going to be a Raiders fan, even though I've embraced, you know, the Golden Knights and everything, a different, different thing for me. But I can't be a Raiders fan because I'm a 49er fan. Totally. So <laughs> with your dad just, you know, recently moving here and becoming like now a Raider, mm -hmm. are you going to be part of Raider Nation? So I'm going I'm to be honest with you. Whenever okay. my dad has left a team, it's like a breakup. It's like, oh, this, you know what I mean? Like I burned like a your full stuff. family breakout. Oh yeah. So I mean, he took the Cowboys forever. So like my closet was all Cowboys stuff, you know? Yeah. The second he became a Raider, I had Raiders license plates. Oh wow. Raider gear, and if I wear a cowboy shirt, I have to wear it inside out. That's okay. Just, that's your thing. So now, Raider Nation. Wow. I can't and the believe puppy. I'm saying that because I hated the Raiders for so long. <laughs> I know it's like the black hole and all that yeah. stuff, but. It's kind of cool because when he goes from organization to organization, you see the insides of things. Yeah. You know, I just see the Raiders as the black hole. But then when you get into the whole background and, you know, the championship, the black and silver, it's, it's pretty awesome. Yeah. So, puppies yeah. too. The puppies are going to get new outfits. Puppies got everything. They already, <laughs> they already got the blankets. My family's like, wait, wait. I'm like, nope. Break up time, babe. Burn it. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go one more question on the family here yeah. because I did also notice um, these beautiful pictures actually on your mom's page <laughs> of their anniversary party that you did. Yeah. And I mean, what was that like for you to be able to do that magnificent fish and that dinner for them? Because they clearly were very proud. Yeah. I mean, it's always a dream to be able to like kind of do something to, you know, make your parents go, like kind of pump their chest out and peacock yeah. a little bit. So for me to have the opportunity to have them in and bring in great product that they could really never get this kind of treatment anywhere. And that's the special thing of having your own restaurant, you know, yeah. to pamper the ones you love. So right. super proud and, you know, they were just over the moon and, you know, being so far away from each other, it's hard to see that day in and day out grind that you do and all the special stuff we do every night. So to have them in just them on my own, it was so awesome. And my mom yeah. cried the whole time, you know. Aww. Oh, man. But no, it was, it was really special. And then they're going to be here now. So yeah, it'll be cool to kind of show them off, you know, every weekend. So mm. we're very curious to see what Gina Marinelli is bringing to Chef Show and Tell. You guys ready? Yeah. Looks yeah. like a pepper mill, right? Does. It does. So this is a Corzetti stamper. Okay. What? You see the bottom? Uh -huh. Kind of a little bit. So uh -huh. this two-part thing to make a corzetti pasta. So corzetti okay. means good. Okay? okay. So this is popular up Cinque Terre area. So you roll out your pasta, you cut it with this part, boom, and then the you part. stamp it with this. So this stamp <laughs> is actually an olive branch. So they usually use the stamp to represent what's like native to their region. So when it's all done, I got you guys some. It's this like yeah. super cool coin. 
and then the pasta actually grips on <gasps> it's in the sauce so it's yeah. really cool so those wow. are like the little grooves yeah that's so, so awesome all the branch in there but i mean it's a labor of love like to make yes. it we'll stretch it out and then stamp each one so it's yeah. super cool i love this thing and again italians are big on like anything round like it represents uh -huh. wealth that's why we eat lentils oh. for new year's eve so this is the corzetti stamper Oh my gosh, that's so crazy cool. No, that's cool. That yeah. takes me back to like medieval times when like right? everybody used to like stamp like that. <laughs> yes, I, it's totally like it. that. What do you want me to do? I'm like, we'll just run it as a special. I won't put it on the menu, don't worry. On the fly with Gina Marinelli from La Strega, 60 seconds, rapid fire questions. Louis, starting now. Favorite Go. pandemic snack? Oh, um, lean pockets. <laughs> <laughs> crazy, are you a crazy cat lady or a dog mom? Dog mom. Yeah, we knew that. <laughs> yeah. Childhood food craving. Oh, um, um, I used to take dill pickles and wrap them in craft cheese. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> First thing you'll do when this quarantine is fully lifted. <sighs> Go to PT's. Dream place to travel and eat. <laughs> uh, dream place is to go to Puglia. Okay. Ooh, yeah. Guilty pleasure. Ooh, um, blue moons. Best, Best self-care practice. Peloton. Ah! Oh my God, I'm so jealous. The Peloton. Is it, is yeah, it truly worth the, the, the oh, price it's, tag? It's worth sure. every single penny. I swear on my life. That's I what I keep hearing. Life. Very yeah. cool. Yeah. Get it. That's what I keep hearing. <laughs> um, we're gonna go ahead and keep going, even though we got the timer right there. We have a few left. Okay. Um, favorite kitchen cooking music jam, which I know is gonna be hard for you because I know you got a soundtrack for a lot of stuff. But what's kind of your favorite go-to, you know, thing for listening? I always listen to Little Dragon. I love Little Dragon. Um, <clears throat> just play like really mellow music, and like I'm super ADD, so it kind of always yeah. just balances me out. Anything yeah. Little Dragon. I got it. Do you ever do? One of our favorite artists, I know that we share, Britney Spears. Do you ever do like a little like freaking, you know, baby one more time or anything like that around the kitchen? Sometimes, like I have my Britney playlist, you know, when we're feeling <laughs> right. it. I need some yeah. womanizer, yeah. you know. Right. Right. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> womanizer. Sanitizer, sanitizer. <laughs> <laughs> that made me laugh so hard. <laughs> Holy crap, Lou. Oh, sanitizer? Oh, we should do the uh, video for sanitizer, Lou. We totally should. I think that would I be know. hilarious. Oh my <laughs> god, dude. The health department would love you. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um, we got two more. Your go-to Corona Apocalypse beverage. Oh my mm -hmm. goodness. Hmm. I'm going to have to say vodka soda. Oh, vodka okay. soda. Okay, yeah. and the last question is, best binge-worthy TV show right now? Oh, what am I watching? Vita. Ooh. Oh. Oh, that's new. Yeah. No, no, no. Oh my gosh, it's on Stars, okay? And it's like a Spanish L word. It's amazing. Oh, oh my God, right? It's so good. So I'm like addicted, Ooh. speaking Spanglish, super sexy. I love Spanglish. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to check that out right now. You guys got to check it out. Got to check it out. Oh, check it out. That's dude. like totally up our alley. That's totally yep. awesome. Yeah. All right, Gina, we're gonna go ahead and have you sell it. It's that time for anything okay. that you want going on in your life, go ahead and sell it. Okay, um, right now we're really focusing on doing our secret burger cooking classes. So we would love for you guys to participate. We're putting a lot of thought and energy. We're gonna do them every Tuesday, you know, until okay. this whole thing kind of blows over and we get going. So that's really important to us. Jump in on this curbside menu. We change it every week. We put so much thought and love into it. So get in here, follow us on Instagram come take pictures, do everything. We just put our curbside inside. It looks beautiful. We're selling cocktails. So, you know, all the effort and energy we're doing, come down here and check us out. Thank you so much, Thank Gina Marinelli much. with La Strega. Can't wait to see you, you in person. We will definitely right. be in the Absolutely. restaurant as soon as you allow it. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. See you Thank later. You. Bye guys. Bye. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>